Well, welcome to the Business Spotlight series. My name is Heather Frierson, and I'm your host of the Business Spotlight podcast. And today I have Joe and Luna Feehan of Legendary Milk. And Luna is the founder and CEO, and Joe is the COO. And today they're going to be sharing all about their journey to business ownership, their best practices and challenges, and really just share a sneak peek of what it's like to own and operate a business. So if this is your first time on the channel, be sure to like and subscribe to get a notification every time a new sh show drops just like this one. Well, Joe and Luna, welcome to the show. I'm so glad to have you. Hi, Heather. Thank you for having us. Of course. Well, I would just love for us to dive in and you guys to share just a little bit of background of who you are and how you founded Legendary Milk. Definitely. we. So this was something that um, I I think it was a business that I kind of stumbled upon, to be honest. It was, it was never intended to be a business. Um, nine years ago, I had my first child and was having a really tough time with breastfeeding. Um, I had worked with a lactation consultant. I was trying different herbal remedies. I was pumping nonstop 24 seven and really just did not understand why I couldn't make enough milk for my baby. Um, someone had recommended that I try fenugreek and, you know, nine, 10 years ago, that was kind of one of the only things on the, on the market to help with increasing milk supply. Um, unfortunately I had a negative reaction to it and doing more research, joining more Facebook groups with other pump, pumping moms. I realized that I wasn't the only one. Um, that that other moms had experienced some side effects with it as well. And so I started doing re research on various herbs that are used kind of all over the world with lactating women that here in the U.S. we just didn't know about. So black seed, moringa, fennel, goat's rue. Um, and I kind of became my own guinea pig. I would order these herbs. I had a little coffee grinder. I would grind up the herbs into a powder. I bought an encapsulation machine on eBay and it would take me uh, 45 minutes to make 60 pills. Mm. Um, and I wow. tested it on myself to see kind of what worked and what didn't. And I thought, well, maybe there are other moms that, you know, for whatever reason, can't take fenugreek and they might be interested in some of the blends that I've made. Um, so I put all of the blends on Etsy and I had a three month old at the time. So I thought this will just be a fun project. Maybe I'll, I'll have one order a month, you know, just to keep me busy. And someone in one of those Facebook breastfeeding groups posted about the product and it just went like wildfire after that. It just was so much organic growth. Um, we had so many moms reaching out, asking questions about how to increase their milk supply, curious about the products. Um, and it's just been a whirlwind since then. It, I feel like it hasn't stopped. Uh, we've just been go, go, go for the last nine years. That is so cool. As a mom myself of a 13 and nine year old, I understand the stories from moms and I'm sure so many listeners, listeners can too. And at the same time, just like a lot of businesses, you found a niche and a need, if you will, really is a need and leaned into that. And usually we are our best customer, right? We're Absolutely. the first customer. So when did you know, you mentioned it kind of took off organic, but you know, I can attest to mommy fog, you know, three month old, four month old. So at what point during that season, you're like, oh, this is not just a, something that people can use this. This is a business. Yeah. I mean, I think for a while I was thinking it was just going to be a fun pet project yeah. probably for that whole year, because mm -hmm. um, I was making a thing in my studio. Um, we had an extra room in our house. So I was, you know, definitely would not recommend um, anyone who's looking to supplements to go that route because you definitely want to be in an FDA registered facility, but it was just <laughs> supposed to be something fun, you know, and um, I would say probably uh, like a month in someone had posted in the group and I got 50 orders overnight. And uh, again, I was making, you know, 60 pills in 45 minutes. So I would work until about two or three in the morning. Uh, I was also responding to a lot of the mobs because a lot of them just wanted support. I mean, I think, you know, Heather, just like yeah. motherhood in general is such an isolating so and vulnerable period. Mm. And a lot of them did not have support at home and they were going through the same kind of why in their mind of why they weren't able to increase their milk supply, just like I had been. Um, and so I would just be on the phone with them going back and forth through the Etsy kind of DMs, um, giving them tips, providing support, being their cheerleader. Uh, very rarely do we actually even talk about the products. And I think that's ultimately kind of what we became known for was 
providing that support and education first. And the products were a very distant second yeah. in terms of priority for me. Um, so that first year, just, I don't think I slept. <laughs> very I much. was about to say, I don't know how you did it I, between it nap was, times. And is that oh what my happened? gosh, I would strap baby into the carrier and we would work, you know, I, that it was a lot easier when he wasn't mobile, but um, <laughs> yeah. I would work, um, you know, with him strapped to me until bedtime. And then Joe would take over, put him to bed. I would work until about two or three. And then I'd wake up with him at seven in the morning. So I just didn't really sleep, but I was so passionate about what I was doing. Yeah. Um, having, you know, like you said, like have, having experienced it myself and feeling like no one can really prepare you for that time period. Even when I was pregnant, I, I attended a breastfeeding class. I thought, oh, this is going to be a breeze. You know, everything that I've been taught in TV and movies and media is that breastfeeding is so easy. Um, and that definitely was not the case for me. And I think a lot of women can relate to that experience of not feeling like they were prepared during pregnancy and even in the early postpartum period for what was to come. Um, and so that first year, you know, was definitely in our, in our home office. And then Joe was kind of the one who said, you're stretched too thin. You can't mm. continue this. You can't sustain it by yourself. Um, so we ended up finding a manufacturer who is FDA registered and mm. CMG, CGMP comp uh, compliant. And, um, they started making our, our supplements for us. And I remember, um, we were probably the smallest order that they'd ever had. They really took a chance on us. I don't think they expected it to get very big. They were like, yeah, we'll kind of throw you a bone. We'll make a really small PO <laughs> for you. Um, and now we're one of their, their, Artist their biggest, clients. yep. Biggest clients. You showed them, didn't you? Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Well, Joe, as you're standing there in the beginning, watching this unfold, what was your thought process and what was really happening? Did you understand it? Did you see potential? Uh, I'm just thinking, you know, she might have been just sometimes you're just doing the work and you're so busy. But yep. watching, what did you think? Yeah. And so it's it's really hard when you're on the journey. It's it's nice to look back retrospectively mm -hmm. on the whole situation. And so at that point, as Luna alluded to, um, I think an important part of the story is she had left a job previously that she was not going back to. And so it kind of goes with our whole mission of of women, she was not treated very well at that location where she was working prior. And so uh, I thought that was very interesting how this has all come full circle, you know, running a women's health brand. Um, yeah. But when you're in the thick of it and you're just grinding, you really don't have time to really understand what's going on. Um, I think the interesting thing from a business perspective um, is that, you know, she started this business with $750 mm. and no equity growth investment. And so, mm -hmm. you know, to the listeners out there, I don't think there's a story that looks like that, uh, where a business has started with $750. And so I like to explain it to people as we were sitting there and we sold one, you know, 60 count of pills, and then we bought ingredients and we made two, and then we sold two, and then we sold four, mm -hmm. and then we sold eight, and it just snowballed from there. Um, and so about a year, maybe 18 months into it, I was at a, a large national bank for 12 years. Um, I retired from there and ended up going full time uh, to help support Luna and help support uh, the business. And so that was when we were kind of all in because uh, neither of us mm -hmm. then had, you know, jobs outside of, outside of the business. And so I think probably a year and a half in is probably when we really um, thought it had legs. And, and you have to think, too, this was back in 2015. And so when you say Facebook mm -hmm. and Instagram, that's a very different world than it is today where everyone knows so the importance of social media. We were definitely uh, uh, leaders in the social media space, in this space. Um, and there were a lot of brands in 2015, 2016 that had figured out the social media play uh, to the business and each of their individual verticals. Mm, that's so true. Social media has changed so much, but you've already established yourself. So now that I'm kind of jumping around a little bit here, but now mm -hmm. that you are really established, you're sounds like nine years in or more. Um, what has changed as far as marketing something like this? Um, are you in stores? Do you have your own online platform? What does that look like? Yeah, you want me to sure. yeah so, so, you know, we had started off as a, a small little Etsy shop. Um, an interesting part of the business, I think, that we're, where we made really good decisions um, is back during that 2016 to 2020 timeframe, everyone just wanted to sell on their website. And there was mm -hmm. this very short-sighted view that, hey, if we keep 80, 90% margins and just sell on our website, everything will be great. 
Um, we took a different view, which was that we need to develop more of an omni-channel strategy. And so, you know, 2017, we started sprinkling products on Amazon. Uh, so it was Amazon and our own website. 2018, we actually got into Target stores pretty mm. easy, to tell you the truth, compared to most CPG companies. And primary, primarily because the buyers used our products. And so mm. yep. that's the, the importance of brand and, and getting out there was... Uh, it made the sale very easy. And so 2018, mm -hmm. Target, and so now we're in Target, we're in Walmart, or um, I'm sorry, 2018 Target, Amazon, and D2C. And then fast forward and forward, we've got 200 to 300 retailers that are smaller. We've got a couple of international distributors. And then in the past 18 months, we've also launched into Walmart on their online platform and on shelves. And so I think the key thing, at least for our business, was to, or, or over time, we very much started to become channel agnostic. Um, and the margins actually prove out to be that when you look across, if you add in marketing fees and everything that goes into that, you, you really can be channel agnostic because there's not really a big arbitrage mm -hmm. opportunity more by channel from a margin perspective. Yeah, that's really good to know. Cause I think, you know, it, it's hard to make those decisions of where to market, where your customer is, which obviously, you know, their moms. But how did you even come to that decision of like, you said you had a different view than most. Was there like kind of a, for lack of a better word, a red flag that said, yeah, this is not going to work. If we keep it here, we need to expand. Yeah. I mean, I think when you think about it, anything is if it's too good to be true, it is. <laughs> and D to C was too good to be true. And so I don't want to say it was an exact science, but, you know, from Luna's perspective, this wasn't too well. Like, we didn't think of it too well as her just saying, hey, I want to get my products on Target shelf. I think it's a great distribution mm. point. I think it's a great store for moms of all socioeconomic backgrounds to be on. And so that was just the more throwing yeah. it out there. Like this would be a good challenge for us to do. Mm -hmm. um, and, but from a from a broader business perspective, coming from more of a risk background, you 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 never want to have all your eggs in one basket. And so yeah. um, if that meant giving up margin by going to lower margin channels for the time being, it definitely ended up being well worth it for that time frame. Um, yeah. And so, you know, things can happen where, um, you know, if, if we were just in Target, let's say, or we were just on Amazon only, yeah. they can change their, you know, their terms and fees tomorrow, and then you have no control over it. And so I think having a very uh, omni-channel strategy was, was very critical to us. And more importantly, we wanted to make sure that um, our moms were able to buy the products where they wanted to buy the products and get national mm -hmm. coverage quickly. And so, again, going back to the Target example, most every mom or uh, a family shops at Target at some point in yeah. time. And so it, it was just a great And we point. love going there. <laughs> yep. But you have to meet moms where they're at, right? And a lot of you them have to, you know, are at Target and Walmart That's as true. well. So it, it totally, it makes sense for us. Yeah, it totally does. So Luna, when you think of this journey, and you're hearing other moms talk about it. I mean, you're you're past that season of that you're might be needing the breast, you know, milk supplements, mm -hmm. but you're still seeing the impact. When you get that feedback, what is that like? Oh my gosh. It's, you know, I always tell our team, we are not selling a bag of chips over here. There is an emotional connection we we make with these moms. We are communicating with thousands of moms um, a month. And typically they're finding us on social media because we have a, a very large community there. And that is, you know, to the point of meeting moms where they're at. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I think a lot of brands make the mistake of kind of shoving their products down a consumer's uh, throat. And we went a different way where I really just wanted to be that support and follow these moms in their motherhood journey and understand their pain yeah. points because I've lived all of them. Um, and so we provide a lot of education, su support, we commiserate with our moms. We we show kind of mom humor because um, if you're not laughing, you're crying sometimes, right? You know, the sleepless so nights, um, the constant feeding for baby, the diaper changes, um, just having a human being that relies on you to survive. I mean, that is just so transformative. Motherhood is so transformative. And I don't think anyone can really understand it if they've they've been mm -hmm. through it. Um, and so, yeah, we just, I think social media has been a huge aspect for us. Um Sorry, can you repeat? I lost my track of I, you guys. No, I love all motherhood forever. I know, I love it all. But I, I was just 
asking how, when you get, what's the feedback you're getting from mothers oh, and how yes. does that make you feel? Yeah. So, and we, we've been to conferences before, um, just in the last year, we, we, you know, with COVID, that was a difficult time to mm-hmm. be in person. We've started kind of um, re-engaging and in, in attending conferences. And we have these moms who come to us almost in tears because mm-hmm. they, you know, they learned something from us from social media. They were ready to quit and they reached out to our team and our team was that cheerleader and that support that they didn't have at home. Mm-hmm. And we told them to take it one day at a time. We, we provided latching um, tips and tricks to them. We helped them with their flange sides when they were pumping so that it wasn't miserable and uncomfortable for them to pump. Um, they had mastitis and they used our sunflower lecithin and it was a one day treatment turnaround. They finally mm-hmm. had relief um, and weren't, you know, they didn't have to quit breastfeeding because of it. Um, gosh, it's just, you know, there's such an emotional connection we build with these moms. And um, I feel like there's such a purpose and passion to what we do. And so yeah. many of our our team members are women who have also been through it. There's a lot of working moms on our team. Um, and I think that helps to to really narrow in on our drive and our purpose behind what we're doing. Um, mm-hmm. Because, you know, there is that emotional impact that happens. Yeah. It's, um, you know, of course, the products are amazing. But honestly, the connections we make with these moms and the ability for us to help drive them and support them in their breastfeeding journey so they just they take it one day at a time. They just keep going um, mm-hmm. is super impactful to all of us. I bet. I bet you have tons of testimonies. Absolutely. Walk us through some yes. of the products you have so we can, our audience can hear what you offer. We have uh, quite an assortment of herbal galactagogues. So kind of where we started was, you know, with these formulations that I came up with. I was, again, the guinea pig. I would try, you know, a little bit of fennel here, a little bit of moringa there, and I would just find the formula that worked for me. And um, I thought, you know, kind of going back to with motherhood, if you're not laughing, you're crying. I wanted to instill some humor into this because I think um, it can be such an isolating and difficult period of time. You kind of, a lot of moms tell us, you know, like they lose themselves in this time because, Mm -hmm. you know, especially when you're having feeding difficulties, it's kind of the only thing you can think about. Um, How much you're pumping, how much baby is being fed with each, you know, with each feeding. Um, if when they sleep through the night, are you supposed to get up and pump or nurse or, you know, what are you supposed to do? Or you lose your supply during stress um, or you're returning to work and you don't know how you're going to navigate pumping at work, Mm -hmm. Um, milk storage, um, you know, diaper feedings, weight gain, like all of these things, you're just, it's constantly on your mind. Um, And so that was really important to me that um, we, we focused on that. Sorry, I lost track of what I was saying. Heather, this is why the business has been so successful because you will (laughs) Very clearly that Luna does not like talking about the products. <laughs> so <laughs> the question was about the products. It's not talked, complete. But, but I think it's important from a branding perspective is, is that this was not set out to be necessarily a business. And it, it's mm-hmm. very hard to drive yourself every day and, and work 12 hours a day when you're just behind a, a product versus like a mm-hmm. mission and a brand. Right. And so that's why it's been able to happen. And so, um, I went so, down the so, rabbit hole. Let me go back. Um, I love so, that. I love that. <laughs> so some of our, our best-selling products um, are liquid gold. So that's one of the formulations that has goat through and moringa. And it's kind of your go-to herbal galactagog mix to help with increasing milk mm-hmm. supply. We also have something called Pump Princess that has herbs that are typically indigenous to the Middle East and India. I'm actually from mm-hmm. the Middle East. And it's something that um, some of the herbs that we use are, are things that my aunts told me about that they oh. use during their breastfeeding journey. So I, I love that it's come kind of full circle. Mm-hmm. Um, we also have um, something called Cash Cow um, that has Moringa and it's a super nutritious kind of powerhouse of nutrients that can be used in late term pregnancy as well. So if you have a mom who was struggling with their milk supply, maybe with their first or second child, they can take this in that third mm-hmm. trimester to kind of prepare um, for their milk production once they have the baby. Um, we also have Sunflower Lesson. That's one of our more popular products because it helps with clogged ducts and mastitis. That's kind of for any mom who might be listening who has experienced that, you kind of go into this panic mode immediately mm. um, because you don't want it to progress to mastitis or something even worse where you might have to be hospitalized for an infection. Um, and so this product works really quickly and it, it typically helps within 24 to 48 hours to resolve that clog. Um, and then we've expanded wow. beyond that into children's health and women's health, which we're super excited for. That's kind of the next stage, next chapter is, you know, we've we followed along in this journey with, with mom and into her journey into mm-hmm. motherhood. Um, now we want to be there for the woman who is trying to conceive, 
who is expecting mm. um, that postpartum period, that labor and delivery period, um, obviously breastfeeding, and then going into, you know, you've trusted us for your supplements when you're breastfeeding. Um, would you consider us for your baby's health? So looking mm. into supplements, like when you're considering a vitamin D product um, or an iron product, if you have a child who's anemic um, or an elderberry product, if you're going kind of through cold and flu season with the family and you want something that's been third-party tested, heavily certified, and it's, you know, obviously made an FDA registered facility. Um, and then beyond that into women's health. So we're looking into um, kind of, you know, I think altogether women's health is a very underserved community and there isn't mm -hmm. a lot of research that goes into women's health issues. Mm -hmm. um, particularly breastfeeding. It's such a taboo topic still, and there's so much stigma around it. Uh, there really isn't a lot of research that's being done. And mm -hmm. um, we really want to take um, the destigmatizing that we do on social media, because we're always talking about nursing in public and how this is a normal thing. And, you know, it's normal to breastfeed older children. It's normal to breastfeed toddlers. You've been taught that this is an abnormal thing and there should be stigma around mm -hmm. it, but this is just what we've been doing for millions of years. Um, and so we're we're bringing that kind of knowledge and support into other taboo topics around women's health. So mm -hmm. UTI support, vaginal health, um, gut health, um, hair loss wow. for women. We're going into research into um, perimenopause and, and menopause. Um, so we're really excited to see, you know, what comes of that. We already have some products that we're actually geared up to launch in the next few weeks. Next week. Um, yes. Oh, around wow. Oh my goodness. That's exciting. Are we breaking news a little bit right yes. here? <laughs> that was going to be one of my questions. How, how do you stay through the phases of womanhood, womanhood? Um, because what you have is so, cause I'm past the childbearing age, but you've mentioned a few phases that I'm in right now. And so yes, that absolutely. is so encouraging. And what I'm hearing a lot of that I think is important that you, that you alluded to is that the education, not only for women, but for the men in their lives, because it isn't something that's talked about, whether it's from breastfeeding to perimenopause, and we don't know how to how to navigate it or even talk about it. So it's an important conversation and it's exciting that you're a part of it. And so what does that mean for Legendary Milk in order to get that word out? What does it look like to get the word out? You're launching next week. How do you market something new that way? Absolutely. Yeah, we, we thought really long and hard about that because- we know that typically moms are following legendary milk because they're there for the nursing and pumping education mm -hmm. and support. And they're looking for tips to increase their milk supply or they're having difficulty with breastfeeding. And so we actually created a sister account called Legendary Women. And that is where oh. we're going to be providing a lot of that education and support around these kind of taboo topics, which we're super excited about. Mm -hmm. The team has done a ton of research um, around a lot of these women's health issues and just the lack of research that's been done. It's, it's kind of honestly very sad. I think there was one, um, one fact that really stuck out to me was um, there's been, I think, more research done on erectile dysfunction, which 17% of men experience and no research really done on PMS symptoms mm -hmm. and side effects um, when nine out of 10 women will experience those symptoms. Um, so it just shows you the, absolutely. It just shows you the, the dirt, the, the complete lack of, you know, yeah. uh, relevant research that's being done when it comes to women's health. And we'd rather Amazing. focus our attention on, on ED, um, instead. So it's just, it's kind of infuriating and very frustrating. We will absolutely be highlighting that on the legendary mm -hmm. women account. You're really, both of you are really a trailblazer here, tapping into a Thank market you. that a lot of people aren't and that women have mm -hmm. to do their own research and even go to the doctor and I mentioned, you know, dismissed or it's not as much as anymore, but you are really being a trailblazer in this arena for bringing the conversation to the forefront. So first, thank you as a woman. Thank you for that. <laughs> thank you. We, we sure hope we are. Um, yeah. I am not afraid to talk about these taboo topics. I hope uh, Instagram doesn't ding us. We've learned that there are certain words that mm. they do not like. Um, so it's a little bit of trial <laughs> and error to find out uh, what we can and cannot say, but we are, we are so excited to bring that information out there. And yeah. hopefully it, um, it really opens up the conversation and maybe more research will come of it, which is yeah. what I'm really hoping for. Yeah. I love that. So Joe, as a CEO and expanding this company to even help with women through all the phases like legendary women. 
what do you see or how do you navigate the business to scale? Yeah, no, that's a that's a great question. Um, and I think we're still working on that. And so I think yeah. we've, uh, you know, um, I always tell people just because you run a two person company doesn't mean you can run a, a public company. Right. And and mm. everywhere in between. And so um, I think one, it's uh, it's finding the right talent um mm. is probably one two and three um and we've had you know successes in that and and failures in that and it, and i think it all lays or leads back to the amount of time you spend in hiring and so mm. we actually might be different than other firms but luna and i have really done the primarily uh really all the recruiting um ourselves mm -hmm. personally we'll reach out to people on linkedin we look up profiles um because if you can find the right person for whatever individual role it is, um, it can, one, as you're growing, usually there's a need right away. You're, you identify mm -hmm. something that you've got one person doing two or three jobs and you need to, you know, get it out of that person's hand. The yeah. gut instinct is we need to get someone in here fast. That can be a very scary thing because you can get someone in there fast easier than you can get the right person in there. And so mm -hmm. um, I think over the years, we've had uh, had some hiccups on that front, but have really gotten a good formula down uh, to make sure that we're hiring the right people. And so yeah. we've, uh, you know, over the years have built out our executive team, um, which are, are uh, have, have done a wonderful job, um, but it didn't come without, you know, some pain or some things that not only for us, mm -hmm. but when you're hiring someone, it's not just, is the, the the person right for legendary milk, but it is that job that you're hiring them to them to do the right job for them. Um, mm -hmm. Cause it has to be a, a two way match. And so right. we've also learned too, I think just from, uh, you know, a lot of trainings and things that we do and tools that we use that it's really hard to train up someone to do a job that you want them to do. You know, they've got to have some key tra you know, we, we use a tool that says, here's the, here's the job or here's the traits that this job requires. And then here's the traits that this individual has. And mm -hmm. those two should match pretty closely. If they don't, it's very difficult for that individual to act in a different way for a long period of time. And so I think we've really, um, I think we've done a really good job of, of uh, utilizing the resources that are out there, but then just learning from experiences around the hiring topic. And, and mm -hmm. think about it, we were hiring through COVID, you know, yeah. we were hiring before COVID, we're hiring after COVID, and those are, you know, three very different um, different hiring atmospheres. Um, mm -hmm. and so I think that's probably the, the biggest thing is um, hiring. And then just, you know, I, we've got to keep, um, you know, as you get larger, obviously, you've got a lot more people. You want to have all the policies, procedures, uh, standard right. operating procedures. Um, but you still need to be nimble and you still need to be scrappy. Mm. And so um, if not, then you'll get away from the core of what got you to where you were. And so it's finding that fine balance between having, you know, meetings from eight to five all day long, every half hour slot versus getting people together for brainstorming and and allowing the time to to get the work done. And so I think we're still we're still working on that, that balance of, you know, professionalizing the business is what I like to call it, but not over professionalizing mm. it to the point where one, the culture is not good and then productivity lacks or the time to turn things around is a lot slower. Yeah, I really like how you said you have to have your standard operating procedures, but still need to be nimble or flexible mm -hmm. is so important, especially as you go from one size company to a larger company like you really are. Yep. So as you get there, you talked about hiring and team and it sounds like you have an executive team. But financially, have you been able to get investors or, you know, you talked about maybe going public. What is that? What is that kind of goal maybe for legendary milk and legendary woman? Yeah. And so uh, and I said public, we we have no uh, we are not going to be going public. And you're like, no, no, <laughs> no, no. Or I, I won't. Luna and I won't be around at that point if that happens. Yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, we have, you know, about a year or two ago, we did bring on um, some minority investors um, that really helped us to um, mm -hmm. kind of narrow in on what we need to focus on as a business mm -hmm. and, and and go back to what we're, we're really good at. Um, you know, there are a couple either product selections or things where we kind of said, oh, we're, we've got a large customer base, let's get them this product, but it didn't really fit into mm -hmm. the core of our products. And so uh, really helped us to focus in uh, on that. And then, you know, I hate the 
I always hate to predict what outcomes may look like just because, you know, in 2015, I was a banker. She was a technology yeah. sales rep. <laughs> and I would have never said I would do 12 years in banking and then nine years in breastfeeding. Um, and so I think it's, that's um, usually not a job application right there. is it? Yeah. I, I think it's, 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 you know, we, we have plans, we, we have, uh, you know, one year, two year, three year plans, but I think it, it all comes down to making decisions that are right for the customer and, and right mm -hmm. for your employees. Um, we can argue about which one is more important, but I would argue that, you know, at, in our business, the customers with the employees right behind it, um, but and then just see where the chips fall or, or uh, mm -hmm. where things where things pan out. Um, yeah. And, and again, it's hard to predict. Like, you know, if, if we would have said nine years ago we're going to have a beautiful nine thousand square foot office and thirty five employees and twenty and in Austin and then twenty five thousand square feet on the other side of town warehouse. You know, wow. we probably we probably would have said we're you know you're crazy. We'll, we'll be mm -hmm. I'll be at the bank doing whatever I'm doing and then we'll be you know figuring out what she wants to do. Yep. Very true. Yes. Yeah. I love that something that you've been so passionate about and that there's a big need that it's been successful. You know, you don't hear those stories all the time. Uh, I get to hear them more than, maybe more so than not doing this show, but to hear your passion behind it from both of you um, and to see it where it is today and that it's successful, it's not going to be something I, I for sure that there's never going to be a need of. <laughs> You're always, moms are always going to need this. Um, so, yeah. so when you think of that and you kind of hit on it a little bit, Joe, that you'd never know what to expect, but if you could just dream big in the next three to five years, you could say, I see this. What would you say that is? Hmm. Let me tell you. I mean, I think definitely the direction we're going with kind of being that one-stop shop for womanhood mm. is I think, um, where I would like the journey to continue. Um, I think we've provided a lot of support um, for our breastfeeding and postpartum moms, but I think we can do more. And that's what really excites me. Um, to your point, it still, still feels very surreal to me that I'm not in my little 100 square foot office making my my pills by hand. Um, it's This is my dream job. And I wake mm. up feeling so fulfilled in what I'm doing and so passionate about helping these moms. Um, and I would love to extend that beyond motherhood to just women in general. Mm. Um, and so that is what really drives me. I don't know if you have, have other thoughts. Oh, oh, about three to five years. Yeah. No, I think it's, um, yeah, I think it's, it's, we're at an inflection point where it's doing what we did in breastfeeding to the broader, uh, women's market. Mm. Right. And so, mm. um, we can talk about some of the products that we launching next week. And so you'll see a very strong correlation. So if you remember our products were liquid gold, pump princess, milk palooza, really fun names. Um, our vaginal probiotic is smitten kitten. Our our gut probiotic is hot girl ish. Um, the hair is main the, event. The hair pro or the hair supplement is main event, and the UTI supplement is girls gotta go. And so it's bringing some levity to you know each of those uh, situations or reasons that you may be mm -hmm. taking a supplement to bring some humor to it. But then I think yeah. on top of that comes uh, creating the same educational, very factually based by bringing mm -hmm. in experts uh, to discuss these topics and getting that information, destigmatizing, but also correcting any misinformation uh, mm -hmm. that's out there in the, in the world of social media on any of these given topics. I also just want to normalize these con any of these conversations because yeah. I think women feel so much shame around that. For example, getting a UTI should just be a normal thing that happens sometimes, but we feel so much shame around it, you know? Um, and here at Legendary Milk, we have conversations. It's primarily women, if you can imagine, on the team. We are talking about this stuff daily, and it's just a normal mm -hmm. part of our daily conversations. And I hope we can get to that point as a nation where it's not something that yeah. someone has to feel, feel ashamed about, you know, vaginal odor, vaginal health, like all of those things are normal things that happen to women. And I guarantee most men do not feel ashamed with their natural bodily functions. <laughs> um, and I hope women can get to that point too. Yeah. 
I was going to say with the names that you have, it, it kind of breaks the conversation Absolutely. and makes it easy. So I think that's great because sometimes you don't even want to go to the pharmacy to pick up your yes. own medication. You're like, Absolutely. Oh. <laughs> yes. Especially to your point, if you've been dismissed and you've had to be an advocate for yourself mm -hmm. at the doctor, or you've, you've had multiple doctors mm -hmm. who have really pushed aside your concerns um, you become your kind of your own advocate, right? I, yeah. I personally have PCOS and we actually have a product that I take personally. Um, mm -hmm. that's my OD pyronositol. It's one of the first things that's ever worked for me and not one physician ever brought it up to me as something that could potentially help. Um, I had to do the research myself and mm. we created the product because of that. Cause I wanted something that I could take that, that yeah. we made that I know goes through that third-party testing that's heavily certified, um, and basically what is in it is supposed to be in it, you know? Um, yeah. and so just even things like that, where we've talked to so many moms with PCOS or endometriosis or going through, mm -hmm. you know, perimenopause where they, they're completely dismissed when they talk to the doctor about this, like these are normal symptoms. It's nothing to be alarmed about, mm -hmm. but it is wreaking havoc in this woman's mm -hmm. life. And she knows it's not normal and she has to be her own advocate and do her own research. Yeah. Even the word normal, normal for what? Exactly. <laughs> normal. Yeah. Wide range so, of normal. That's for sure. That's for sure. Well, I, for one, could talk about this all day, but <laughs> I, I, I want to get into some rapid fire questions that are really fun. But before we do, um, what about legendary milk or even legendary woman? Do you want the audience to know that maybe we haven't discussed yet? Hmm. What do you think? No, that's a great question. <laughs> I mean, if you want to drop some secrets, um, I think, I think, that, week, I, think that we're, I think one thing for him to know is that we're here in Austin. Yeah, uh, that's probably, a, you know, it was interesting <laughs> for nine years, you know, we still run into people. Oh, you're, you're in Austin. Um, just because the world is, is so small now, right. That it doesn't really yeah. necessarily matter that we're in Austin. Um, I think, um, I think going, you know, going forward, I think it's good to know that legendary milk is, uh, you know, obviously done a very good job supporting breastfeeding and pumping moms. Um, and going forward, we'll be broadening the scope into the broader women's market in the same the same manner that we did uh, previously. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and that may look, take a different shape or form. It may take a different educational approach. You know, from an education standpoint, I think it's very interesting because a lot of people who know a lot about certain topics, they tend to attack with information. And I think mm. the one thing we've done is meet people where they are, right? And I always go back to before Luna and I had kids, and most people feel this way, I think I can make this generalization, that most people when they don't have kids, you know, you go to a party and, you know, family members of kids, like you could care less about those kids, right? Like you just do mm -hmm. not, you don't have kids, you're single, you know, living your best <laughs> life. And they're talking about their kids all the time. And you're like, these people are so annoying. Um, and you know nothing about it, right? And then all of a sudden you have a kid. And then mm -hmm. you're talking about your kid all the time. You're researching mm -hmm. all this stuff. You're trying to know as much and be the expert in it. And so I think it's it, I, I, it's always important, particularly if we're teaching women's issues to men, it's to not shame mm -hmm. them just because they don't know something, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's bringing the edge. They, right. they just don't know. Now, if they're mm -hmm. saying dumb things about it or ignorant about it, you know, on purpose, then that's a different story. But it's it's bringing education to them yeah. um, in, in a way that's, you know, not going to, you know, push them away, whether it's the men or the women on, on any given topic. That's great. I love it that it's a couple that, you know, a man and a woman, I think that makes a big impact too. And that you have your different roles and ways you're going the business, but just for this specific style or product, if you will, that um, you're in it together. I tell yeah, you, Heather, okay. I have trained him really well. He is a breastfeeding expert. He can talk about <laughs> breastfeeding like the best of them. Um, he has women who, uh, are friends that, you know, we've, that have had children and they're struggling. And sometimes if I'm not able to help, he gets on the phone and starts giving them I tips. And advice. So, um, no, there's, we, there's no embarrassment here or any shame around breastfeeding. We are happy to talk about it and I've trained him well. <laughs> yeah. I should say too, when you hear legendary, if they're not, if you're not watching on YouTube, but you're maybe listening to this on an app. That legendary is spelled D A R D A I R Y, like yep. milk. Yeah. I fun love that. <laughs> Thank fun you. Little, yeah, fun little name. All right, rapid fire questions. Let's do this. You ready? Yes. Yep. All right. What is the key to success for you? I'd say teamwork. Mm. 
What do you think? Do I interrupt? Yeah, you can do it. Um, I think I already alluded to it. They, like the key to success of business is hiring mm. the right people. Yeah. Because if you don't hire the right people, you don't have good teamwork. That's, That's true. Right. They kind of go, yep, hand in hand. Yep. They go together. All right. What is the one piece of advice that you would give to other business owners? What do you think? Um, go deeper in the service or product that you offer. Mm. So be careful about getting too far outside. You know, when you see success of saying we were successful in this area, let's move over and try, you know, I, I'm a, I do uh, um, car repairs and we were really successful at car repairs. So why don't I go open up a restaurant, you know, right next door, <laughs> right? Just because I was really good at car repairs. And so I think really focusing in at your core of what you do mm -hmm. and either expanding the uh, customer base uh, through that same core or expanding um, your product set or service through adjacent channels. Mm -hmm. I think on, I would say really on top of that, I can't remember the name of the song, but maybe it was from the eighties, but it's what have you done for me lately? Yeah, uh -huh. I think about that all the time. Jody you know, Wiley. Like, yeah, most most people do not care about your product. Um, they care about what you can do for them. And so mm -hmm. always be thinking about those pain points that you're addressing with your product um, yeah. and keep that that community, that consumer in mind when it comes to anything that you're doing around marketing, social media. Uh, it's so important to keep yourself mm -hmm. in the shoes of that person um, and not really just shove your products down their throat. Really think yeah. about how you can provide value to them. I love that. I love that. And I know 80s pop music, so that resonated with me. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> All right. A book or podcast? What are you listening or reading right now? I wish we had more time for this. Um, <laughs> I think I think with two kids, um, the first book that came into my head was Wild Robot because I'm reading that to, to both of my kids. I would say, you know, we are you know, as entrepreneurs and business owners, we work all the time. There isn't a set mm -hmm. nine to five. Uh, we work on the weekends. Sometimes we work at night, whenever the need is there, we are, we are working. Um, and so for me, the time that I have my, my kids, that is my quality time where I just turn off mm -hmm. everything and I'm focused on them. And so there isn't a lot of time for, I'd say, um, self-improvement when it comes to the certain books that we're reading. It's mostly just kids books. So yeah, kids books. Well, you're doing a lot of research too. So that's yeah. a lot. That's of true. Yes, absolutely. Yes. And the kids say I'm not a good reader. So I don't, not allowed I don't, to read. I don't yes. get the opportunity to read to them very often because they say mom's a lot better at, at reading. So that's true. You have other gifts and talents. It's okay. That's right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right. This is kind of a fun question. If you had a little bit of magic dust and could sprinkle it in one area of your business, where would you sprinkle it? Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> probably across the... I, I thought about this one because I was thinking about that, that this may come up. Mm -hmm. um, I think almost across the whole organization, not in a bad way, but really to get the speed right and efficiency. Mm. And so like to get that right mix of um, getting to market efficiently without mm -hmm. missing the market. And so mm. that could be in a product launch, that could be in a, a marketing campaign or whatever. And so I think there's been times where we've, you know, gone too slow. I think there's been times we've gone too fast and there's uh, pros and cons to each of those or we've mm -hmm. typically learned in certain ways on each situation. So I think just figuring out that right mix of, um, and it kind of goes back to small company, big company and professionalizing mm. is like getting that right mix of like here, this is just the right speed to bring a product to market, to market a product, um, I think is probably the best. You know, as far as yeah. different areas of the uh, the company, you know, we've, we've really hired um, the right people for the right roles. You know, if you asked mm -hmm. the question two years ago, you know, there'd probably be a lot of, um, magic dust we'd be sprinkling around you know hoping it was yeah. it would change but i think we just we've we've learned from our the scars and then um, i've hired the right people and so a lot mm -hmm. of the a lot of the areas are doing pretty well pretty well yeah, yeah i was gonna That's say great. i can't think of any that was a tough question because i 
knock on wood, I I feel like I'm really excited for what's to come. And I think we have hired the right people. Mm -hmm. A couple of years ago, I would say probably the magic dust answer would be, I wish there was another one of me um, mm -hmm. because there's just so, there was so much to do and there's only so much of you to go around and you feel like you're stretched really thin. I think also as a working mom, there's always that battle of how much time you can be with your family and your children. And then also how much you have to devote to your work, especially mm -hmm. as a business owner. And yeah. I think we finally found, found that balance um, where I can spend that quality time with my kids and be able to turn off my emails and my Slack and all of that and really just be present with them. Um, so yeah, that's, I think that we have kind of figured out that equation for now, yeah. which I'm going to knock on wood again yeah. because you just never know when that might change. But um, we are just really super excited for what what's to come with Legendary Milk. And yeah. I think we're finally in a place where we have the right team, where we don't have mm -hmm. to be running around like a chicken with its head cut off yeah. and be involved with so many different aspects of the business. Yeah. Sounds like it. And I was going to say, and you're in this expansion, you know, season right now where you've already duplicated both of you, I'm sure to some extent, and then now it's the next level. Um, so that's exciting. Yep. Absolutely. So, yeah. Well, before we get to the last question of the day, share with everyone how they can follow you, get in touch by your products, all the things. We're, we're both on LinkedIn. You're, you're welcome to follow us there. We, um, we also have uh, a pretty big following on social media. We're on TikTok, uh, Instagram, and Facebook, uh, under legendary milk. And there's an I in dairy, just kind of a fun play on words, um, with legendary milk. And, um, those would be the, the easiest ways to find us. Um, we're always happy to connect with other local business owners to provide any support and maybe have, some um some powwow some meetings where we're all kind of sharing best practices that's always fun mm. to see um yeah i'd say those are the main areas yep. to, to find us awesome all right final question of the day what is most inspiring you today hmm. most inspiring Today's a, a tough day with the election i will say um well sure <laughs> that's uh yeah. it's tough tough to be inspired today, but I would say, um, just in, in general, um, the hope for the future when it comes mm. to women's health is very inspiring to me. Um, I, gosh, I wish I could go forward six months to a year to see hopefully the impact that, um, legendary women has made in terms mm -hmm. of making, ensuring that women don't feel so alone in mm. some of these really stigmatized topics, um, that we go through it, go through day in and day out. Um, that is what's super inspiring to me is just the hope for a better future for our young women, our girls that we're raising, um, that they come into a, a world where they can talk about these things without yeah. feeling shame around them. That's that's great hope that we all should have and and strive for, for sure. I, Thank you for I sharing think, that. Uh, I'll, I'll win this one. <laughs> my inspiration is my kids. Oh, and, our kids. and so- we, we have two boys and I think not, not inspiration is probably the right word for it, I think, but, you know, kids have just such an interesting way to look at things and, and really simplify things. And so, um, you know, there's certain just topics that come up where, you know, adults are probably going back and forth that. And then your nine-year-old says something and you're like, yep, yeah, that's probably, you know, the right answer, probably it, you yeah. know, um, yeah. or the four-year-old just has a simplistic view on things and is really yeah. enjoying life and reminds you that maybe you should smile a lot more right because mm. i'm smiling all day long and i'm having a good time and so i think that's a good um and we have two great kids too um that's great. i think i think the kids really i think are the interesting part because we're obviously mm -hmm. you know hopefully we aren't too old now but we're getting older but they they definitely bring our array of sunshine um and i think also the you know I think the next generation too, I think with the proper guidance. And so there's mm -hmm. always, you know, every generation kind of hates the other generation, it seems, you know, mm -hmm. or like each generation as you go down, thinks the next generation's lazy or something. And it's just, uh, if you read books back, it's happened in every generation. And so, mm -hmm. you know, I think we have a, a generation coming up that's uh, very smart, understands technology, um, very accepting, a very good worldview and understanding the, the global world. And so I think, with some guidance that is on, you know, on us to do, whether it's our, our uh, more junior employees um, or even our, our children, um, I think we can really uh, do a good job and be a positive influence for, for that generation. Yeah. I was also thinking 
the fact that you do have two boys that you're introducing them to them to conversations through your business. Absolutely. That will actually help them be good husbands. In the yep. Oh, I hope so. And oh gosh. Their mate. Yes. So they, that's, they, they that's both really know all about legendary milk. They know all about legendary milk. <laughs> they know all about breastfeeding. It's something that's incredibly that. normalized. Um, they would not bat an eye if they saw a woman uncovered breastfeeding. And that really should be how it is. Yeah. Um, that's you know, great. obviously we've our culture has learned to sexualize breasts and we don't deem them what they're intended for, which is feeding babies. Um, people get very uncomfortable with that. And so I'm hoping that we're raising the next generation of yeah. kids who are like, this is normal. This has this is normal. We've been doing this for millions of years. And this is what has ensured yeah. the survival of the human race. Let's just call True. what it is like feeding babies. Yep. We are, <laughs> you know, ensuring the next generation survives. So yeah, I love that so much. That's great. Well, this has been a great conversation. I could actually have this all day and have tons of questions. Yep. We might need a part two, yep. um, but I think it's been a great conversation. I'm so glad our audience learned about legendary milk and legendary woman. So I just want to encourage everyone that's listening and that joined us to, today to be sure to save this episode and come back and listen to it because um, there really were some great nuggets of wisdom and so much. So thanks to everyone who joined us today and a special thank you to both. Joe and Luna for joining us today. It was so great having you and hearing about your business journey. Thank you so awesome. much. For Thank, you, us. Heather. Thank you. Well, until next time, we'll see you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.